So, um, atmosphere, the next tab over, this is where you can get, um, it, this basically is everything surrounding the model that's not technically modeled. So you have your geometry that you built, and whether it's Revit, SketchUp, Rhino, and then there's this like dome that's all the way around it that you're within, the Enscape is, is creating. So you can tell it to use like just white background, and then let's say you want it to Photoshop in something on your own, you don't want that default thing, you can just use this, and then that way it's really easy to Photoshop in. Um, you can leave like the Enscape generated sky, which is actually usually really good because it gives you a lot of control. So regardless of kind of what you want in the sky, you can almost make it. Um, and then horizon is down here. So it's like not up in the sky, but down here. And then along the back. So do you want it to be clear, which is basically like nothing? Forest, which looks like that. So it's like a forest. Um, and there's also like, let's say like we wanted to render that way, but it's showing like these hills. That's what this thing is for. That's, that's the angle. So then you can rotate this and get it to what you want. These are, um, are usually almost like 100% of the time look weird. Um, we can add fog. Let's see if that helps. 100% fog didn't do anything. It's like behind that. Um, so, and then there's like mountains all these other ones. White cubes is kind of interesting if you're in like a city and you didn't want anyone to know I guess that that's a city and you can just generate random stuff. So I don't know if these are super useful for like an exterior rendering. Maybe if it was an interior rendering it's just kind of something out the window and no one really knows what it is. Um, or you can just have white ground which is what I have right now. Which it lets you rotate for some reason but it's a white ground so um, fog will make it look foggy, like in the off in the distance, or less foggy. See here, it comes right up. So that can be useful if you have like a sight that goes out, you don't want to see the edge. And then it also lets you control the height of the fog, so you can bring it down, or you can go up. So this might be nice if you're trying to do like a really cool, like late in the day one or early morning. So see there, you can really get that kind of feel. So you get a ton of variety just by changing some of these settings. Um, can add less or more. Might as well look haunted. Um, but be careful because see some settings like the reflection here, it ends up looking kind of weird. So these are all things you want to do before you, it doesn't have to be before you set your animation path, but at least before you render the final one. You want to make sure you have these looking exactly the way you want. Because what you see in Enscape in the preview is really close to what it ends up being. It doesn't have this weird kind of filter that appears later that changes everything. So what you see there is pretty much what you're going to get. So make sure that looks right because if not, you're going to not be happy with it. Um, all of these settings adjust pretty much the, the clouds up in the sky. Um, so density is like how cloudy it looks and that really affects the lower clouds these like big poofy clouds so depending what you want to do and then also changing the time of day totally changes the sky so if you're not really happy with that cloud right there um, you can change like by doing this like variety like moving it around and then don't fall in love with like that exact cloud because if you change the time of day like it could like roll away and then it's like you you got that one cloud in the perfect spot but it can move uh, and then this is all around you so as you move throughout your building you're going to see the sky everywhere it's not only behind you that's the benefit to it because then you get nice reflections in your windows that you wouldn't get otherwise if it was just like one of those half dome things um, and then the cirrus amount is the little wispy clouds that are really high up. So if we turn this one down so you can see those. So some people don't like those clouds and they just want the other clouds. So that's these ones. So if you take everything out, you get basically a gradient. So remember last class we were looking at how to draw a sky in Photoshop. So doing that, 
you could basically get something like this real simple and so here you have a lot of control over how much of this do you want and do you want these clouds or do you want it to feel like a storms on approach to make it super cloudy you do something like that So, um, contrails, you want to watch out, because this is like how many, like, planes go by and leave contrails in the sky, and like, as you change time of day, this looks weird. When you have like a lot of them, see, it's like, like, they just go by like everywhere. And, so I usually leave that way down, around like two. Um, longitude and latitude, this also will greatly change the sky, so you can like, make it look more exactly like it would be at the site that your building is in so you get the correct sun angles at that time and everything so that you'd obviously would have to look up um, and then it, it, it really just affects what's up in the sky um, and then sky orbs is what they call like anything else that's up in the sky I guess so the sun brightness um, if you crank it way up or you turn it way down, to see how that has an effect on everything basically if you're doing a, a daytime rendering. Um, and then the night sky brightness would be obviously same thing for night. Shadow sharpness, if we look right here, you can really see, let me hide that thing. So if you watch this shadow, how it like starts to fade out and then we adjust this setting. If you go all the way down, see there how soft it is, and then if we come all the way up, see it's it doesn't have as much fall off, so it's really sharp. So that's one setting that I kind of like it softer because I think it gives it like a nicer feel. So that one I'll usually have low. And moon size is just how big the moon is at nighttime. So uh, input.